Hi folks, Robert O'Brien from O'Brien Guitars. I'm here with Ryan from Brown Note Productions. He's my student slash victim of the week. If you ever need a $2 million PA system involved in your event center or installed in your event center, Ryan's your guy. He does all big time production work like that. Speaking of big time production, what we're gonna do today is we're going to install the neck on that body. This is day two of the class, and at the in the afternoon of day two, this is how far we've gotten. In the morning of day two, we have closed the box, uh, voiced the guitar and all that kind of stuff in the morning. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the mortise and tenon. To do the mortise and tenon, we're gonna be using the Robert O'Brien mortise and tenon jig available from LMI. And there's a few things about this jig that will make your life a lot easier, and a few little tips and secrets that we're gonna tell you along the way. So let's do it, what do you think? Do it. There we go. So the beauty about this jig is it's made to do the mortise and the tenon in the same jig. And Rolo Padron, one of my students years ago, uh, designed and incorporated this into the same jig. I used to have it in two separate parts, but he uh, said, hey, I think we can make it better, and that's what he did. So we're gonna start with the mortise side. So doing the mortise and tenon is like building a house. If the foundation is square and plumb, as you build up, the roof fits. If the foundation is not square and plumb, as you build up, you've complicated your problem. This is the foundation when setting a neck joint. Make sure that your bindings are flush here, make sure this area is flat as possible, and then make sure that this area is flat. Take a straight edge, put it across there like that, make sure there's no daylight in there. Then we're gonna put that into the mortise side of the jig. Notice I've got a center line on there. That just goes right up there in the mortise side of the jig, and I just eyeball it. And then go ahead and close this up. So I just eyeball the center line. LMI sends you this little plexiglass thing with a center line on it. And I just eyeball it because I think you'd have to be seriously off one way or the other to make a difference because that tenon is not snug in there anyway. So just eyeballing the center line, making sure that the body is all the way up against the bottom of the jig. Tighten these up until you hear a crack and then you back off a quarter turn. I'm kidding, Ryan. You don't need to hear the crack. <laughs> But you do want to snug it up in there pretty tight. Now, some guys believe in Murphy. I also believe in Murphy. And they've come and put like bungee straps and things under to help hold the guitar. I've never had one slide out of there. And if it does, it's not my guitar anyway. Right, Ryan? <laughs> all right. So with the guitar all the way up against the bottom of the jig on the center line, next thing I'm going to do is move the template to determine how far into the body I want to cut the mortise. And depending on whether or not you're doing an OM or a dread, you want to be able to control that. So I just loosen these little set screws here. What I like to see is for my neck to come flush with the bottom side of the binding. And then when I put a heel cap on there, I'm halfway into the binding. So I'm gonna set this up so that this is right at the end of that binding. And then with the offset of the guide bushing and the uh, router bit, it's gonna cut back this way just a skosh. And so I just set it up there about flush with the end of the binding and then just snug this down. You don't have to kill it, it's just kind of finger tight. So for my weapon of choice, I'm using the uh, Porter Cable with a plunge base router, and I've got a 5 8 inch outside diameter guide bushing. I think it's 17 30 seconds inside diameter. I'm using a half inch straight cut bit. Now you don't have to remember all that, it's all available from LMI. Give them a call, they'll set you up with the correct guide bushing and the correct router bit. So the first step is to set the depth of cut. What I do is just bottom it out, and then release my depth gauge there. And here's one of the secrets. This is a really cool trick. You need a super high-tech shim. I got NASA to make me this one. It's just a block of wood that's seven eighths of an inch thick. I come in here, raise that up, put the block in there, tighten it up. I can plunge all the way down to there. When that hits that, I know that I've gone seven eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters. You feeling lucky, Ryan? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. I've got the depth set, and I'm gonna do this in several passes, about a sixteenth to an eighth in each pass. Total depth is seven eighths of an inch or 22 millimeters, so you, I'm gonna do almost six, seven, eight passes. I've designed this jig so it's like going to SeaWorld and sitting up front to, uh, for the dolphin show. You wanna get wet, that's where the excitement is. So all the debris comes out on the operator. Uh, there are people out there that have installed you know, dust ports and you plug your vacuum in and that stuff. I usually have a student standing around like Ryan here today, so I'm just going to have him hold a dust collector hose up there for me. So I'm going to do one pass, very shallow, stop, uh, take the router out, evaluate it. If I like what I see, then I'll drive it on home. Or as James Brown would say, I'd take it to the bridge. When you're using this jig, rule number one, 
Never remove the router with the bit exposed and spinning. That also happens to be rule number two and rule number three. If you happen to place that against your body or against your thigh, it's going to be a bad day. That's not the main reason, though. The main reason is you're going to booger up the template and you have to call L9 and get a new one. So don't let that happen to you. I'm going to start with just a shallow pass and evaluate and see if I like it. That, folks, was a textbook example of rules number one, two, and three. I allowed the router to completely stop spinning before I pull it out. So I took just a very shallow pass to make sure I like the setup. I'm just a little bit shy of the binding down there, which is what I want. Center line looks good, so now we can drive it home. Just loosen a little bit, that's fine. Loosen your other side. Pop it out of there, show us what you got. Should just slide right out the bottom. Look at that. Wow, we're pretty committed at this point, folks. Now, if you happen to cut it off your center line, I'm sorry. Don't let that happen to you. Also, don't cut it too shallow or don't cut it too deep. We're right at 22 millimeters, which is 7 eighths of an inch. That's half the battle. Now we're going to turn this thing around. We're going to do the uh, tenon on the neck. And this is where this jig really shines. So that right there. I'll loosen this right here. Good. And what we're going to do is just spin the jig around. And we'll let it hang over off the table like that. And then come in, put your clamp back on there. Either way you can get it on there is good. good. So for the tenon side, you have this shelf under here. And it's on a hinge. And that allows you to dial in the correct neck angle. So on my uh, necks, I use the LMI truss rod, which is a quarter inch wide. I've got a couple of quarter inch dowels in there. So I come in and just place it right on those dowels and then bump it all the way up into the top of the, the jig here, making sure that you're flat. You don't want to be rocking like that. So make sure you're flat. Then come in and just place these on here and just kind of finger tight, lock that into position. Got another one up top here and lock that into position. Now let's go up top here and do the setup. So according to the mortise, I cut down into the body 75 millimeters and I need to set that up so I'm going to cut 75 millimeters on my tenon. Ryan, if you'll hold that please. And so what I can do is just loosen the set screws here and once again this is made to incorporate different body depths like if you're doing a dread you have a bigger neck. So I can slide this around to incorporate that. I want 75 millimeters of tenon so I need to set this thing up for about, oh, 71, 72, because the offset of the guide bushing and the actual cut of the router bit will give me about 75-ish or so. And you want to err on the side of caution. I'd rather have it 74 than 76. Right. So I've got this set up for about 70 or so. And then come in, lock these down. Good. So to set the neck angle, what I do is just take the guitar body, I've marked on here the saddle location, place it on here, make sure there's no debris or anything on here, just place it on the jig and run it forward until it hits this metal bar. Now that metal bar is uh, stuck to the side of that shelf where the neck is. So this is simulating the neck on the body and this little metal bar coming out here and I can measure the gap back here at the saddle. On my guitars, I like to see 3.5 millimeters gap at the saddle location. And right now, I see two millimeters. I need a little bit bigger gap. So if I go down below here, there's a little screw. I can have a little nut on it and I can pivot that until I get three and a half millimeters here. So I'm going down below. And it doesn't take very much. Now I've got three and a half millimeters. You want to check your side, Ryan, just to make sure? So right, right here where your line is, there you go. And let me make sure we're good. Three and a half millimeters. A little bit more. You got a little three and a, three and a quarter, three quarters, four. There we go. Three and a half? Three and a half. All right, we'll go with that. So that's our correct neck angle. So off camera, before I put this in the jig, I cut 
the angle of my neck, I, I assume is going to be about 88, 89 degrees. I cut that on the end of the neck here. However, when I tilted that shelf under there, look what happened. So I need to take a little bit more off of that angle. People get real concerned about that. A couple guys in my chat group have these fancy jigs and stuff. Heck, I just take it over to my disc sander and just grind it away a little bit until it's no longer in the way there. All right, just a quick bump on my sander. Now we're flat, see that? Now don't get too concerned about this because the mortise doesn't bottom out in the cavity of the tenon anyway. You want a little gap in there. So if your angle's a little off, who cares? There's gonna be a gap in there anyway. All right, let's set up the router. Once again, to set the depth, I'm gonna use my super high-tech shim from NASA, put it in there on my depth stop, seven eighths of an inch, tighten it, pull it out. I can now plunge down to that. Now the only problem is on this side, we're gonna to have to do quite a few more passes because the neck is a bit wider in there. So two or three passes on each side, round the turn, two or three passes on this side, life's good. All right, if you look inside my jig here, you can see that there's an aluminum hinge there. What's left of the aluminum hinge because my students have keep, keep running into it over the years. There's plenty of room in there once you come out of the tenon to stop before you hit the hinge. But the guys that don't know what they're doing, they just drive it on in there and they wind up hitting the jig and the hinge. If you're concerned about that, just take a stick and put some double stick tape on there and just stick it down. That way your router won't go all the way back up in there. Mine's already been chewed up. I've done hundreds and hundreds of guitars with this jig, so for me it's not a big deal at this point. But if you're concerned about that, place your stop on there. All right, folks, I want to point out a couple of things about this jig. One, I've opened this up a little bit. It comes a little tighter from LMI. I just took a sander in there and sanded that out of the way. That way I don't have to cut as much off the neck. I can let the router do the work rather than me doing the work. That's one thing. The second thing, which is really important, is Ryan stopped the depth here about an eighth inch shy of the final depth. The reason for that is we can go and put it on the guitar, check our gap. If we're off, if our measurements were off, and we come out instead of three and a half, we come out at four and a half, five, or we come out at one and a half or two, then we can redeem ourselves. We got another eighth of an inch to come in and adjust our angle and redeem ourselves. So that's important. That'll save you a lot of headache right there. So you'll notice we're still quite a bit shy in there. There's our 14th fret line. We still have another eighth of an inch to go. We're quite a bit shy in there. When I first designed this jig, years ago, I was still working at the college, and I wanted my students to have a little bit of experience with hand tools. So I designed the jig so that the tenon was a little bit oversized. You have to come in with a chisel or a file or something and take that down so it fits in there. Over the years, I've done hundreds of guitars with my jig, and it's getting worn enough that it's just, it's just fitting in there nice and snug at this point. So I don't need to do any hand work. Perhaps you will need to do a little bit of hand work on your tenon to make it slide down in there. So to measure the gap, I'll go ahead and place my straight edge on there. I come in with a ruler down here at the uh, saddle location, measure it, and I tell you what, Ryan has been lucky all week. Everything he's done in this class has just been spot on. That comes from good, clean living, driving the speed limit, paying your taxes on time, going to church every now and then on Sunday. We'll get you that right out of the gate. We are right at three and a half millimeters. So we can just go right back over to our jig, take that extra eighth of an inch at the current setting. If we were off, adjust your jig accordingly to get you the measurement that you want. In my case, three and a half millimeters. So let's go back and drive it home. All right, so we drove it all the way home. We put it on the guitar body here. I'm noticing a problem. My tenon is bottoming out here in the mortise cavity. So I just take it over my sander again, just bump the, uh, the back side of the tenon here on the cavity. You can go as much as about an eighth or a sixteenth uh, distance in there. You don't have to go all the way down. In fact, I prefer for it not to be all the way down. So I ground just a little bit off the end of the tendon because it was too long. We place it in the cavity there now. Come in and check our gap. I've got about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe not even that, maybe a thirty-second there where the mortise is just a hair short, which is what we want. I'm coming in here and measuring, 
at my saddle location. Bingo, three and a half. Ryan, you did good. Congratulations. All right, at this point, you can just go ahead and keep on setting your neck. Put your bolts on, bolt it on, check your center line, all that stuff that I show in my online courses. Happy building, folks.